Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my third alternative using the April 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit. I hope you're going to stick around, see how I'm going to make my card, including how I'm going to use up some of the scraps from the kit. Welcome back to all my subscribers and regular viewers. I am so glad that you stopped by today. If you're new to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on the bell for notifications. Over the past few days, I have shared with you a couple alternatives that I've already made using this kit. They're the two cards you see in front of you. If you're interested in seeing the process video for these, I do have the playlist linked in the description box below. For today's card, I'm going to be trying out Kylie Bertucci's Scrappy Strip Technique. Now, I did something similar probably 10 to 15 years ago, but when I saw her and her husband make a video about it, and I've seen lots of them pop up on Instagram, I thought I would give it a try again. And this is going to be perfect for using up some of those scraps that you usually might recycle. For the scraps in this card, I'll be using these two pieces. They are from the banners and the leafy branches. Also from the card kit, I'm gonna use two envelopes with the dark green flap. You could use the other ones as well. I just thought I would go with these. I got out the card with the text on it, one of the larger sentiment die cuts and the light green fishtail banner, both of the cards that come with the kit, and then I also got out a scrap of white cardstock, and this is just from when I've cut up other cards in the kit for previous alternatives. For my stamps, I will be using the Happy Father's Day, and then I double mounted some little ones on this block. I have the branch and the word dad. Now I will also later be using the tree leaves and the trunk, but I'll be using my Misty for that so I can restamp it if I need to. So I did not already put these on blocks. I'll also be using the Pear Pizzazz ink spot from the kit. And then finally, items that are not from the kit, I got out my Versamark ink pad and my Detail White Embossing Powder. Once I start the process for this card, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I got out my Fisker's little photo trimmer and I cut the pattern area off both of the card bases that came with the kit. Next, I grabbed the sediment piece that came with the kit and I cut that into strips. Now I did cut it so that the text read correctly and you'll see that I kind of tilt it in the trimmer. There is no rhyme or reason to this. I just tilt it, cut it, tilt it again and just kind of keep going back and forth until I have cut up all of that strip. I then continued this same process for both of the pattern pieces that I cut up from the card bases. Once I finished those, I got out what I would normally recycle, kind of the scraps or the trash from the kit, and I just cut off the edges at angles so I could use these as strips as well. This is a great way to make the most of what's left over. For this final scrap, I will be using the straight sides that are left over. And I know that these aren't angled like the other pieces, but in the final card, you can't even tell the difference. And this yellow especially adds a nice accent color. And here's a look at all of the strips that I cut. Before I can start assembling the card, I did need to get out my bigger trimmer to do some longer cuts. The first thing I do is cut the flaps off both of the dark green envelopes, and then I'm gonna cut down those scraps of white cardstock. First piece of cardstock, I cut to five inches tall by two and a half inches wide. And this is gonna be the base that I put all of those little strips on that I just cut. The next piece is going to be the mat for the scrappy strip. This I'm going to cut to 5 and 1 8 inches tall by 2 and 5 8 inches wide. 
The second piece of cardstock I'm going to cover with the two envelope flaps and it will be the mat for that scrappy piece strip or the first piece of cardstock that I cut. You'll notice I just put adhesive on the back of the flap and then I'm going to put the other flap on the right side of this piece. Now there is going to be a small place where they connect that might not be perfect, but this mat is gonna be so small around that other edge that nobody's gonna notice it. This is just a great way since I didn't have the perfect color cardstock that I could find to go ahead and mat that other piece and help it stand out from my card base. While I finished trimming off the excess from this piece, I wanted to stop by and give you today's secret word. That word is scrappy. Don't forget to write this down and keep track of it. I will be back later this week or early next to give all of the details on my 10K subscriber giveaway where you could enter to win one of four $25 gift cards. Please make sure to keep in mind not to leave a comment below with the secret word emphasized in any way that will disqualify you from the giveaway. And now it's time to start putting my strips onto my piece of cardstock. I got out my art glitter glue with the fine tip and I got out a cutting mat that I bought at Dollar Tree to protect my work surface. I chose one of the strips that had text on it and I put a small strip of glue on the back on the middle. I'm going to make sure that the top of this piece is aligned with the top edge of my cardstock. That way later when I go to trim it down, I have a nice straight edge to use. Once that piece was in place, I grabbed the darker green pattern, put some adhesive on the back of it, and then I glued it right up against that first strip. In Kylie's video, her and her husband do leave a small white space open between each of the strips, but because I'm going to be stamping on this later, I do need a nice solid surface for my image, so I did not leave any gaps today. I try to continue in the same pattern for each of the pieces until I am all done with the entire strip. Now this last piece of text, it was kind of convenient that it said, and end with family. I pulled back out my photo trimmer and like I mentioned before, I'm gonna use the top part of this to line up against the straight edge of the trimmer. Once I have that so the strips will be the only thing cut off, I go ahead and cut this and now I have a second straight edge to cut off the stuff at the bottom and then another one to cut off the remaining side of the strips. Next I pulled out my Misty stamp positioner and I aligned the left edge of this strip with the 4 inch mark on the ruler. I want to place my tree toward the bottom of this and I decided that I wanted the tree trunk to start down there in that dark green kind of like it was grass or earth. Once I had those positioned where I wanted them I then picked up both stamps with the door of the Misty. Now because I will be using embossing powder and I don't want any powder to stick where I don't want it to, I got out my embossing buddy and ran that across the surface. Now I'm going to ink up that stamp really, really well. I want it to be nice and juicy and I press that down onto the scrappy strip. I poured some of my detail white embossing powder over the top of the strip and kind of moved that around until I had the stamp covered. I decided to go ahead and give it another layer just to make sure that everything got powder on it and there was a little bit to the side so I just wiped that off with my finger. All of the excess got poured into my tidy tray and then later I will pour that back into the container for the embossing powder. And here's a close-up look at the heat set piece. I like how you can see those lines from the scrappy strips below. To do the rest of the stamping today, I got out my Sizzix Stamper Secret Weapon Pad. And this just helps because these stamps don't have any foam behind them. It gives a cushiony surface so they stamp nicely. I do have this product linked below if you want to go check it out. The Happy Father's Day stamp got stamped into the widest part of the tag and then I stamped Dad right above it to the left. To fill up the extra white space on the tag, I mounted the branch onto that tiny stamp block and I inked that up once with the green and then stamped it off onto that scrap of paper before stamping it onto my tag. I ended up putting three branches in that white space.
I decided off camera to use the yellow die cut strip from the kit instead of the green tag. Also from the kit, I pulled out one of the birds, the mini dimensionals, and the glue dots. And now that all of the pieces are ready, it's time to start assembling the card. The first thing I do is mat the scrappy strip piece onto the piece of dark green that I created. Next, I cut a little off of the yellow die cut, but you'll see later that I'm going to cut even more because here when I'm kind of playing with the layout, it still seems too long. Before I do that though, I am going to go ahead and put my scrappy strip onto the card front. I align this to the left so there is an even border on the left, top, and bottom. I decided where I wanted my white sentiment tag to go on the yellow strip and once I had that figured out, I put a little strip of adhesive down the center and adhered that to the yellow. Then I got out my scissors and I'm going to cut a fishtail in that left side and I do that just by snipping a little into the center and then cutting in from the sides to meet that. It was at this point where I knew that this was still a little too wide, so I cut off some excess and made another fishtail in the right side of the yellow piece. Once I knew where I wanted to place this on the card front, I put six mini dimensionals on the back of this piece and got it adhered down. This placement allowed you to still see some of the tree trunk on the left side of the sediment block. To finish this card off, I placed a mini dimensional on the back of the light green bird and adhered it to the right of the sediment. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my card today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.